So it's been about a week since the open beta and there's been a lot of new information coming out from the Diablo 4 team. Things like how the respec system could be working out late game, news about how those gems are clogging up your inventory, and they might have even come up with a solution already on what they're going to do to fix that. 4000 series GPUs having problems with Diablo 4. The dev team got asked about that and there was a response. With that one, I'm going to give you my own take on it because I think I know where that comment's coming from. And a lot of other stuff from like legendary drop rates, how the world tiers work in the later game, and much more. Now first up, Pez Radar, he's a community manager for Diablo, had some information on future dev live streams that are coming up. That's where they bring a ton of good information on the future of Diablo 4. Now Pez Radar said here he's getting a lot of questions about the developer's next update stream. That'll be sometime in April, and they're going to have a special guest. Last dev stream they mentioned our uh, topics will be progression, endgame systems, and Diablo 4, and we expect to also chat about some beta learning. So when we get more information on the exact date and time, we'll bring that to you. But look forward to the next dev update here in the next month. Now you may have noticed that gems were like cluttering up your inventory. If you had one or more of each in your inventory, it took up literally 25% of the slots you had. And it didn't really help out a ton more if you put them in your shared stash because the next time you went out and ran a dungeon, you got a whole bunch more of them and boom, they're filling up your inventory again. So you might as well have just left them in your inventory. There is, I think, absolutely, literally eh, nobody that really liked that. And there was a lot of different opinions on what could be done about that. But the most common one brought up was adding another tab there in your inventory for those gems. Now, they already have ones for elixirs, quest items, and stuff like that. Throwing another inventory tab in there, not really much of a problem, I would assume. This is actually one that the devs answered very quickly. They said they are aware of the gem cluttering issue. They're looking at ways to address it. And they specifically actually said, possibly by adding a gem inventory slot. So it is great, in my opinion, to hear and to see that they're really listening to community feedback and they are correcting things that are definitely problems. Now, next up, the number of legendaries that people were finding in the beta were a little bit over the top. And just for an instance of this, just remember, everybody, you're not going to be finding all those legendaries on a playthrough generally. We don't know exactly how much, but unknown foul here on Twitter asked Rod Ferguson, can you please confirm if the drop rates are increased for the beta? Simple yes or no answer can alleviate some concerns people have. It really did seem, in my opinion, kind of crazy. All people at level like 20 having maxed out full legendaries fully leveled up in the first act of the first world tier. Rod Ferguson did actually confirm, yes, they are turned higher, but we don't know exactly how much, but they want to give everybody a fuller experience and better test during the beta. So just take this information into consideration when you're selecting what character you first want to play through the game with. Now, there was some information that came out last week. People were having problems with certain particular 3080s that they even sometimes were bricking or just having different types of issues. Now, apparently there were some rumors that the 40 series graphics cards were having some problems. So a person here, Amy, on Twitter asked Pez Radar, careful with the 4000 series. Diablo 4 was bricking them during beta. And Pez Radar had a simple uh, answer to that one. It wasn't. Now, I can actually kind of, I guess you call it report, tell you my experience on it. I have a 4070 Ti, and actually what I found out that the issue was is that the NVIDIA graphics card drivers were having issues in compatibility with OBS, Open Broadcasting System. Now, if you're not a streamer, you'll probably never, ever see the type of issue that I was seeing. But what was happening is for some reason, OBS was causing my graphics card to use like 80 or 90% of its total capacity on OBS while streaming. Now, the reason that this started causing problems with Diablo 4, because when I stream Diablo 2 Resurrected, it uses almost no power, right? When you're running Diablo 4 on the highest possible setting, the game's trying to push out like 150 frames per second, and I didn't really pay attention to set the frame cap. So what my graphics card was doing because of the open broadcast system and the drivers for the NVIDIA, for some reason, it would pin out at 100% utilization and it would cause the stream to eventually crash and sometimes the game as well. So this is probably what this question is referring to. So if you're not a streamer, you literally have nothing to worry about. What I ended up having to do to fix it, I kept my frame rate at whatever my monitor is, and I did lower the graphic settings in the game a little bit along with switching and going to a different driver for my NVIDIA graphics card. 
in the beta we got a ton of legendaries and you started to see all of the different legendary powers that you could get and it turns out there's actually way more than what we've seen there was a data mine if you didn't see my video on it recently go ahead i'll put a link in the description you can check it out but someone data mined out all of the list of every single unique there is in the game and every single one of the powers that can be on legendaries there's a ton, ton, ton of them. I don't go over all of them, but you can check out that website and see what they all are. But there's going to be way more powers to help out your characters in the late game. Now, updating and getting a little bit more insight on the late game respec system, because we all know from playing the beta early on, it's essentially free in the first few levels, and the price starts ramping up. And towards around the level 25, I think it was three or 4,000 gold per level at that point. So... When it gets towards late game, it could be very expensive. Someone asked Rod Ferguson about this on Twitter. Diablo 4 was a great time so far, and me and my friends enjoyed it. We're all older now, and we really don't want to have to waste time remaking characters. Instead of being able to more easily distribute skill points, is this for sure going to ship in the launch? Rod Ferguson replies with, It's not prohibitively expensive, and we've made it easier to being able to refund a single skill point instead of the entire tree at once. So I'm not sure exactly what this means for his original comments because originally he did say it would be so expensive to respec at the end game that you wouldn't even want to do it and you would just go ahead and make a new character. It sounds like he believes that this one point at a time type of system will alleviate any of those problems late game. There was some great analysis done, I'm not exactly sure by who, but I found it uh, posted up on Reddit, exactly how the world tier system is going to work, the experience gain, gold gain, and different things along those lines. Now first up, level 1 to 50, the world tier systems, difficulty 1 and 2 will be unlocked. The tier 2 system gives you 20% increased experience and 15% more gold. Now at this point, you're just finding rares and legendaries at best, with the only unique you're really going to find is a cleaver that can occasionally drop from the butcher. Rare items, of course, 3A fixes. Legendaries can have 4A fixes. Rare and legendary items share the same pool of A fixes. Legendary aspects can be crafted on rares and on the legendaries. Now when you bump up over level 50 up to level 70, this is where you unlock the difficulty 3. You actually get a 100% increase to experience 15% more gold, and foes overcome 20% resistance. This, of course, requires you to complete the campaign and the Cathedral of Light Capstone Dungeon on World Tier 2 Veteran. At World Difficulty 3, sacred and unique items added to the pool. Also, Nightmare Sigils that unlock Nightmare Dungeons can drop, and the end game starts. Helltides can appear across Sanctuary. Champion monsters with resistance auras can also appear. You'll be able to start getting special crafting and material ingredients from said monsters. And also important to note, only sacred grade aspects can be crafted onto sacred items. Now once we jump over level 70, we're unlocking world tier difficulty 4. They get a massive 200% experience gain, 15% more gold, and the foes overcome 40% resistance. Now you have to complete the Fallen Temple Capstone Dungeon in the Northeast Dry Step on world tier 3 Nightmare. At World Tier 4 difficulty, Ancestral items and new unique items can now drop. This is, of course, the endgame loot for endgame builds. Rare items now have 4A fixes, just like legendary items. And, of course, Sacred Aspects onto Sacreds and Ancestral Aspects onto Ancestral items only. And now just taking a quick look at some of the stats from the Open Beta Weekend. Now, super crazy, over 61 million total hours were played on this Open Beta. 576,000 people got slaughtered by the Butcher. Probably a few hundred thousand of those were me. Went with my level 12 druid. Oof. And Ashava killed 10 million people. Well, at least it probably killed each of my characters 15 or 20 times. Not a surprise, the most played characters? Sorceress and Necromancer, the most OP characters early on. Now, if you like this news wrap-up with no fluff, make sure you check out this video right here, because I know you're going to enjoy it.